Hello everyone, welcome to the Thoughtfully Made Fiber Vlogcast. I'm your host, Amy Sher. Today is October 17th, 2021, and it is a sunny day in St. Louis, Missouri, but don't be fooled by the sun and the lovely lighting. It is actually quite chilly in the mornings here now, and we've been enjoying wearing our knits and having a hot cup of coffee first thing in the morning and just generally enjoying the start of fall here. We moved here back in May, so this is our very first fall season here in St. Louis. Now, I kind of knew that this was going to happen, but the weather here now in mid-October is very similar to deep winter where we came from, which was Los Angeles, California. So we're really enjoying the cool, but I'm a little bit afraid of what's going to happen next and uh, what we're about to experience my first St. Louis winter. So there's quite a few of you who are new here, so thank you for coming to check me out. Um, and if you've been here for a while, then welcome back. Thanks for choosing to spend a little time with me today. So um, it's taken me a little bit longer than I intended to record this episode. Just because since we moved here, my child, Clara, who is one and a half, has been doing a nap strike. And for those of you who are not parents, a nap strike is when a child just flatly refuses to nap and cries and cries and cries no matter how you try to soothe them. And then they're tired and cranky all throughout the rest of the day. And it's just been really overwhelming and a little bit hard to find a quiet couple minutes to sit down with you and film. But we are here today, so um, I have a lot to share. So we're gonna get right into it. First, let's get into what I'm wearing. I am wearing, finally, my Twinkle Pullover, which is by Midori Hirose. Uh, I knit this, this was my moving sweater, and I've shown it here before, so uh, I won't go into great detail about it but it is uh, knit from Daruma Gemmo, which is a really interesting merino yarn. Um, the bulk of it is kind of a um, unspun strand of merino, but then it's plied with like a tightly spun, almost thread-like strand of merino, and that gives it structure while still retaining that kind of like fluffy and light um, unspun quality. So I think it's a great yarn. It's pretty budget friendly. I would say it's on like the upper end of um, the low budget range I would consider. So maybe like medium, kind of early medium. So here is the full sweater. I've talked about it before, but I love the shaping. It has like an underarm raglan shaping after all the yoke is completed. So that is what I'm wearing today. I knit it over the course of three or four weeks while we were moving, so I think I'll always remember this as my moving sweater. I don't know if you do that, but I do. Um, many of my knits have, oh, excuse me. Many of my knits have strong memories attached, whether good or bad. So uh, this one will always feel like a transitional knit for me because it was knit during such a time of great transition in my life. So that is the Midori Hirose sweater. Um, I hope you'll try it out. It's one of my favorite patterns of all time. I just think the color work speaks for itself. Like it's so good. And then the little raglan shaping just makes it fit so wonderfully and it's like the perfect little box size, boxy transitional sweater and it's really easy to style. You can see that it hits just at the top of my hip here. And it's easy to style and easy to wear with dresses. Like it's not too long to wear over dresses. And I think it's just perfect. All right, let's move on. What do I have here? Finished objects. Let's do that. I have such a bunch of goodies to show you. First, let me show my finished second pair of the Dots and Dashes socks. Look at that. 
So the dots and dashes socks were originally knit with Sunday Fiber Co's um, Barefoot Organic. And I've shown that one in quite a few episodes already. So, um, or actually maybe just the last episode because I haven't been good about filming. So I have shown it before, but I wanted to show this new pair I knit, which I knit from Knit, Prick, knit Picks Capretta Superwash. Um, they kindly sent me this yarn to work with and it knits up at like a standard standard um, 32 stitches per eight inches for me sorry per four inches per four inches um, which Sunday Fiber Co's Barefoot Organic didn't um, that one is like a little squishier a little plumper so that one I knit the socks in like four different sizes on the pattern and I have to knit the smallest size, which is like 54 stitches, I wanna say. Uh, 52 stitches, 52. But on this pair, because it comes at a more standard gauge, I just sized up and knit the next one up, which is my standard like 56 stitches situation. Um, I knit all my socks on US 1.5. Uh, what else is there to say about these? Oh, these are a cashmere blend. Let me show. It is so soft and I just know, and I said this before, I just know that it's gonna pill a ton because all cashmere blend socks are. And I would highly, highly recommend um, not washing this in the machine, even though it does say it's super wash. I think all cashmere blends just deserve to be washed um, in the sink very gently, soaking, no agitation. Uh, maybe one of these days I'll make a tutorial on how I wash my socks. I feel like it's almost like too simple and too easy to make a tutorial or a video about that. But then I think it's really interesting to watch all the different ways that people take care of their knits. So maybe that could be something we could get into, but that's my first finished object. Yay. All right, let's move on. All right, so next. Ooh. All right, so next, let's move on to my finished vest, which is as of yet unnamed, but I hope to have a name for it soon. It is a cable vest, and I'll insert some footage over here um, of myself wearing it. It is reversible and has a scoop neck on one side and a v-neck on the other side. Um, it is constructed kind of interestingly. Um, I had the idea for this vest all the way back in, oh, I want to say June, and it took me a really long time to execute it because I had never seen a vest constructed this way before and I really had to work out like how I wanted to get the shaping right. So it has kind of a side button band going on, which I first discovered in maternity wear. Um, I think when I was um, pregnant with my kids I, and shopping for maternity clothes, I saw a lot of these side button uh, garments that were intended for like you can unbutton it to give a little bit more ease to still cover your tummy as you get bigger and then also when you're nursing it's easier to unbutton it and then pull it aside to nurse so I first got that idea but then the more I thought about it the more I was like I would wear this all the time I think that side button detail is so cute but I had never seen it in knitting design before and I didn't have a pattern to knit it from so I designed it so here it is um, yeah not much else to say but it has a side button band and it has got this like really oversized kind of boxy look to it it is knit from and I wrote down that I wanted to talk about the yarn um, let's see it was knit from Wolfolk Tove which is a um, American company. They source 
ultra soft 17 and a half micron merino yarn from the Patagonian region. And let's see, what is there to say about this? This is the T00 color. It is 12 plies, which makes it very, very round, very, very bouncy, high twist situation. So it has the most delightful definition in the cables. Hopefully you can see it in some footage that I've shown here. Um, yeah, it's a great yarn. It is also, um, this is a great yarn. It is also Aran weight, so it knits up very quickly, which um, I think when I'm knitting a cable garment, I don't want to spend forever on it because I'm quite a slow cable knitter. So it was really nice to have one that was relatively quick to work. So that is knit up on, for me, it is, I think, size seven and nine needles. And this little baby will be going to test very soon, like within the next week. So if you're interested in test knitting for me on this, I'd love to see, hear from you about it. Um, I will link to my newsletter below because that is like the most easy and guaranteed way to see when I have a test knit out um, before I post it to Instagram or anywhere, anywhere else. I always post my test knits to my newsletter first. So if you'd like to see future test calls, then please do check out my newsletter. And I also hope that you'll enjoy some of the other content there, which is like little snippets of my life, things I'm baking, just like general nice things about knitting and making. It's very much about my making practice. So I'll put that down below. You can sign up if you want or not. Um, but I'm very excited about this recipe. Let me come and adjust this. Okay, so my very favorite feature of this is surprisingly not the side button bands, which was like the entire concept, but it is this v neck that is reversible. It's a scoop neck on the back. And I just think, if I do say so myself, that it's quite killer. I really, 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 really love it. Um, I've always wanted a cable vest. And now I have the cable best of my dreams. So that is my second finished object. All right, one more, one more. We have one more finished object. Oh my goodness, where is it? Where did it go? Oh, here it is. Next up, I have a bit of hand, spin hand spinning. This is a bit of DK weight sock yarn that I have spun up. Uh, from fiber, a uh, mill, bl mill blend fiber from Ingo Nook Fibers. I've talked about them a few times here before, but they make the most lovely hand dyed fibers for hand spinning. Uh, all their hand dyed colors are incredible. This is not that. This is one of their mill blend yarns or mill blend fibers. It is a blend of Shetland, mostly Shetland, with a little bit of Gotland for warmth and some uh, bio nylon fiber. So bio nylon is a fiber that's apparently very similar to regular nylon, except that it will biodegrade a little bit faster. So it'll still lend strength to the sock fiber, but hopefully be a little bit gentler on the planet. The uh, fiber itself is also processed with recycled wastewater. So it's just generally like a really lovely Shetland, very woolly um, sock fiber that's been more sustainably created. And I think I talked about this in the last episode, but I'm all about trying to find ways to be more sustainable with sock knitting because on the one hand, if we use a non-superwash yarn but, and no nylon, and it just falls apart, then that's a waste of fiber and like the water that went into processing that fiber, the water that went into dyeing that fiber, that's a waste. 
but then I don't want to keep continuing to put like microplastics in the ocean with endless nylon. So this seems like a pretty decent alternative. Like not only is it a bio nylon, it also was processed with less new water. It's all wastewater. So I'm going to come up here and show a little bit of close up. I spun this in traditional three ply. I just love, 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 love that it's like a moody, gothy, like intense color with like bits of hot pink. Bits of hot pink shooting through it. How clever is that? Um, so I spun this pretty tightly, traditional three ply. Um, I only started spinning during the pandemic, like on the wheels during the pandemic last. October, so it's been a year now, and like, everything I've spun is horribly under twisted. But for the first time, this one I feel like I twisted it just right. So I'm really excited to be knitting that up. Um, I'm like desperately looking in my schedule for places where I could knit, not for my design work, but just like for myself. And I hope I will be able to knit up some vanilla or ribbed socks with these um, and then maybe even like write up a little pattern for DK weight vanilla socks because I think that patterns like that are always helpful in every weight so uh, yeah we'll see where that goes but that's my third and final finished object all right I have a few works in progress so let me go ahead and show those. The first is more hand spun. I actually have some um, spinning going on, but I don't want to show that today just because it's like too much stuff. But um, I've been knitting up a little sweater for my child, Clara, who is one and a half, the one who doesn't nap, <laughs> uh, out of leftover hand spun scraps. Now this is all merino. Some of them have a little nylon in them because some of them were designed for sock knitting. Uh, these are all various leftovers from mittens, socks, things like that I have knit before. And I'm gonna go ahead and come over and show you a close up now. How cute is that? That is pretty dang cute, isn't it? So it's like kind of chaotic because of all the colors in it. But basically this creamy color here, this blue here, this yellow, and then the same cream again, were all DK weight, but then the pink was kind of like a fingering weight. So I held the pink double and then everything else single. And I'm kind of winging the math. I used the cast on math from, oh, what's the pattern? That tin can knits one, Strange Brute, the DK weight. And I didn't do any color work pattern, I just knit. I like kind of when it increases, to be honest, but it fits her, so hopefully it'll fit this winter. Um, I just really wanted to knit something for Clara that uh, will keep her warm this winter. She does have a sweater or two that I've knit for her that fit right now, but um, she gets them really dirty really fast. So I needed like another quick knit to keep her warm while at the same time, I didn't want to use more yarn. Like I wanted to really do like a deep stash knitting situation. So I think it's been very successful. The colors are totally chaotic, but she won't mind. And I think they're kind of cute. What do you think? Is this color competition? combo two out there? Let me know what you think below. So that's my first work in progress. I love wound up fiber parts. I think her dyeing, her hand dyed fibers are incredible. She has some great super wash options, which I don't normally adore. I don't do a lot of super wash knitting, except for socks. <laughs> but I love her sock blend for socks and I've spun and knit quite a few. So it's nice to use up kind of the odds and ends of that because um, hand spun yarn is seriously so precious. I didn't want any of it to you know, go waste. So there's that. 
Let's see, what else am I working on? Oh, I've been working on a new design. So, I have loved, I think I've talked about this last time. Oh my goodness. Every time I do this, I've got like stitches falling off. Okay, so last time I talked about how Lori at Mother Knitter, who is the American distributor for Santa's Garn Yarn, reached out to see if we could do a collab. And I love their yarns, so I happily said yes, because um, to me it's really important to um, not only uplift people of color makers, who I try to do as much as possible, like people who dye yarn, people who make patterns, things like that. Um, but at the same time, I want to make sure my patterns are also financially accessible. So I try to have like, you know, the socks, like the example of where did the socks go? Oh my goodness. I try to have like knit picks options for, um, where I try to knit up knit picks versions of my patterns where possible. And then this is another part of that. I think Sen is gone. They do like their Nordic wool that's um, really affordable and accessible. And they're fantastic, high quality wools. So I really wanted to share that with you all. And this is what I have so far. It's like a really simple, basic, boxy raglan with a neck that's not too narrow because I don't like it when the neck sits like too high up. It really makes me feel like I'm suffocating. And I basically wanted to design like my perfect customizable raglan uh, sweater with a worsted weight wool that has a ton of drape and a ton of texture. And this is basically that. So it looks super basic. However, I've got a few tricks up my sleeve. It's gonna have like a little underarm, um, twisted rib detail, and it's gonna have like different color options, like different ways of making this your own and kind of adding your own personality to it. So um, this one, oh gosh, I cast it out on Tuesday and it's knit at um, 18 stitches over 10 centimeters or four inches. And it's knitting up super fast. Cast on Tuesday. Today is Sunday. I've got this much. So I hope to be done with the body. Maybe by Wednesday. Like within a week of casting on. And then I'll do the sleeves. And then I'll go into testing. And this will be out over the winter. Um, this wool is... I think I talked about it last time. But I'll just talk about it quickly again. This is... Um, alpaca wool and it is a 65% alpaca and so I talked about the wool last time but I'll just quickly go over it again this is alpaca wool by Sadness Garn I'll come up and show it to you and do a close-up insert here it is 65% alpaca and 35% wool. It is produced in Norway, and this is a non-superwash wool in worsted weight. Um, the colors are, to me, a little bit heathered. which I didn't know could happen. And then when I came back to film, there was a cheerio on my chair where I had been sitting here this whole time. If you've ever been a parent of a five-year-old or two-year-old, then you know. <laughs> Cheerios are found everywhere. Okay, where was I? Alpaca wool. So this is what I'm knitting with. 65% um, alpaca, 35% wool. Uh, the alpaca content gives it so much drape, um, which I find is missing in my wardrobe, like a really drapey and comfortable and super warm sweater. And knit at a slightly more open gauge at 18 stitches over 10 centimeters. It should be super comfortable and great for my first St. Louis winter. So hopefully the next time I film, 
which will also hopefully be sooner <laughs> than a month, which was the gap from last time. Um, I'll have it on it up and ready to show you. Um, I'm currently debating how many sizes to grade it to. Um, I think my standard adult sweater sizing will be from 28 inches chest circumference to like 62 or 63 but I'm also debating grading this all the way down to baby size because um, I got quite a bit of this wool thinking I would make something different but then I decided to do a basic instead uh, so I think I might have enough to make a different version for one of my kids so we will see where my brain takes me because oftentimes my brain doesn't want to stick to the plan and I have to be really careful to protect my time not let my brain kind of get away from me so that's the alpaca all right I think all we have left is acquisitions oh wait I forgot to talk about the Nicole shawl I'll insert some um, pictures here but a couple weeks ago I published my first shawl pattern which is a collaboration with Hinterland Yarns. It is 50% uh, Canadian Rambouillet and 50% Alpaca. And all of it is completely undyed and it's delightful. I'm really, really happy with the way it turned out. Um, I was kind of sketching it and knitting the trimmings of it while um, watching episodes of Nicole's Gentle Knitter podcast. It was, I think there was an episode where she had like a mitten that had micro stripes. And for some reason that really stuck in my head. So I wanted to have micro stripes, but with garter. I think she knit the micro stripes in stockinette. But for some reason I got it like really into my head that I think like in a, an episode, like just before or after that one, Nicole was talking about how squishy a garter stitch shawl was. So I got it somehow in my head that I really wanted a garter micro stripe shawl. But then I wanted to break it up with some lacy elements and that's exactly what I come up with. So um, the sample is not with me, but I, I'm gonna insert the pictures here and then I'll put all the information including yarn kits below um nicole very generously allowed me to name the shawl after her and i'm glad that she seems to like it and seems to think that it is a uh, fitting pattern for the name uh, that's always the challenge when you're inspired by someone and you create something inspired by them one is never quite sure if it's going to actually be them or be like your idea of them. But Nicole seems to like it and um, I thought it was fitting to have a shawl dedicated to her because of its Canadian natural undyed <laughs> yarn origins. It feels like it's very much like in the theme of her podcast. So um, if you like it, check it out below. I've got all the links to the yarn kit from Hinterland Yarns as well as the pattern below. Um, everything I talk about in my episodes is always in the box, so give it a look. All right, we have, that's a toilet. That's my kit. Okay, I think it might be quiet enough now for me to talk about my acquisitions. <laughs> this has been a very challenge, like I said earlier in the episode, it's very challenging to film these days. So this is, prepare yourselves, this is knitted in yarn, which I hope you've heard of, but if not, oh, in for a treat. Knitted in yarn is uh, created by Hone Rokir, I think that's how you pronounce their account name. Um, I'll link them below, but I purchased this in the August collection, um, which they released uh, a small curated collection of colors and fibers uh, monthly and they're non-repeatable because the fibers are very specific like each month's fibers is going to be a totally different blend and each 
color also has different, like from the other colors, fibers in it. They're a small Swedish mill and they just, yeah, they work with small farmers and small batches of wool to create these really interesting and unique yarns. So um, here it is. This is the cream from the August collection. They come in unspun plates like this. And I'm gonna read the copy. Okay. <laughs> trying to find the description for this color here okay according to their instagram this one has a base of natural fine white wool with a little bit of warm yellow dyed on a gray gauntlet base with a little bit of natural brown which is fine wool look at that i originally had some plans for it but then those plans for design changed as they do sometimes design ideas don't work out or then you have to like do it with a different yarn like there's all kinds of things that happen so i'm still trying to figure out I'm so distracted by this though i'm trying to work out what to make with this though um, i have a sweater quantity of this one from the august collection and it's just the most perfect neutral and i had a feeling it would be like really lovely against my skin tone and my hair for like a wintry garment maybe i will make like a that same <laughs> senes garms raglan but in this instead we'll see but it's lovely lovely and i love it okay my last acquisitions is this incredible pair of sock yarns. These I received from Darcy of Darcy Does It. Um, I will link her podcast as well as the website for her fiber box below. I met up with Darcy to hang out a little bit. So we hung out for a little bit the other day and she brought me the most beautiful yarn. Um, this is from her fiber and color box, which is a monthly um, kind of like a club. There's no subscription required. It just opens once a month and then you can order it for the next month. Uh, and this was from, I wanna say September or maybe August. Uh, this is dyed by Treehouse Knits in Austin, Texas. Um, this colorway is called Land of the Living, and this is a two-ply fingering with merino wool and 20% nylon. And it is just so great. I love like the pink and purple, like kind of the purple gray tones. Um, and like this really red bit here. Oh, so delicious. So normally I like to knit socks with sock yarn. But in the case of this one, I just really don't know what to do with it. Like, it's so beautiful. It feels like it would be wasted if I just knit socks because I have two of them. And there's like enough yardage for maybe a t-shirt on my size. I cannot figure out what I want. But either case, it is beautiful. Um, every month, Darcy curates notions and yarns from dyers of color and makers of color and um, every month the colors are amazing um, i'll insert a picture here of the november pre-order which is open i think um, i have ordered the fiber version of it for this coming month and i'm super super excited to receive it uh, maybe by the next time i film i'll have it we'll see but i have so much spinning to show you coming up it's very exciting um, i think that's all my acquisitions i've been Holding off on some acquisitions just because I can't talk about the projects associated with them yet. <laughs> but I promise I will get to them. But uh, for now, these are the ones that I have to show you. And that's all I have for today. Um, it's fall break here in my kid's school. She is in virtual school. So I must go now because I promised to take her to the pumpkin patch today and that's what we're gonna do. Um, I'm gonna wear my little Midori Hirose sweater and just try to enjoy this lovely crisp, not that crisp now, it's like 75 degrees outside, 
crispy-ish fall weather and try to get into the spirit with some pumpkins. Um, I hope to talk to you soon. I have so many things coming up that I'd like to talk to you about. So I'm going to try to film again in about two or three weeks. But I said that last time and then it took me an entire month to get around to filming this one. So um, stick around and I hope you have a wonderful day.